<laughs> Hello! Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. My name is Kevin. And it's Tuesday. Look at how long this paper is. It's crazy. Uh, they wrapped me up and sent me to record this video for you. Um, so today we're diving into parallelism or parallel structure or parallel construction. Um, and we're going to work on just how to spot uh, parallelism. So sometimes the tough part in sentence correction is just knowing how to spot certain grammar errors. You may know about them, but you may not know how to look for them. Um, and so what I'd like to do is just kind of cover the basics here so that when you do go into a question, um, you know what to be looking for. And you can think, ah, parallelism. So first, what is it? Um, well, it's all about uh, the structure of your sentence, so it's sort of a grammar issue, um, and how you structure uh, a sentence. And the basic concept here is equal ideas, equal structure. So if you have, if you have certain things in your sentence and you're building the structure of your sentence, you want to pair nouns with nouns, infinitives with infinitives, gerunds with gerunds, phrases with phrases, clauses with clauses, you don't want to mix and match. No mixing and matching is really the key here. Um, so where do they appear? Where, how do you know when to look for parallelism? Well, uh, there's a couple of things to look out for. Anytime you see a list in your sentence, so um, two, three, four things in a list where they're separated by commas, um, Think about parallelism, and these can be simply a single word in your list, it can be a phrase, or an entire clause in your list. Um, watch out for colons too, so colons can precede lists, and so that's often something you want to think about, um, is if you see a colon, think, ah, maybe I'm dealing with parallel structure here. Also in comparisons, um, a lot of comparisons have an idiomatic structure, that we follow naturally, and we want to make sure that when we use the idiomatic structure, we're also following uh, the concepts of parallelism. So keeping our uh, things equal. Um, we have a phrase that we're comparing, compare it with another phrase. And we have a noun we're comparing, compare it with another noun, or adjective and adjective, so on and so forth. Um, the last one here, you probably won't see really on the GMAT. This is more uh, in, uh, you'll see this more in fiction for sure, and then also, uh, writing with lots of flourish in it. Um, rhetorical device here refers to sort of uh, the style of how something is written. Uh, people can use parallel structures to emphasize points, to draw attention to something. Um, and so that's another place where parallel structure occurs. Um, so enough talking about it. Let's take a look at some examples. Um, some of these examples are flawed, so we're going to fix them. Um, question number one, or excuse me, sentence number one. She likes programming, designing, and to socialize. So this one stands out to your ears, hopefully as being a little fishy. Something's wrong here. What we have is uh, some gerunds and then an infinitive. So we're mixing and matching our structures. And so what we want is to either change these two to match this one, or just change this one, which we'll probably do. So uh, we change this two, um, let's cross it out. Change it to, that's right, socializing. So now it sounds a lot nicer. She likes programming, designing, and socializing. I'm gonna choose another red pen. Um, number two, the fox ran across the field, jumped over a fence, and into the forest she sprinted. So here we're dealing with phrases um, the the uh, noun, main noun here is the fox, and we have ran across the field, jumped over a fence, and so these two phrases are paired nicely. Uh, we have a verb, ran and jumped, and then a prepositional phrase, across the field, over a fence. Then when we get to the last item in our list, um, we have the prep prepositional phrase, and then uh, a noun and a verb. So that's breaking the um, structure that was set up in these first two items of the list. And so what we want to do is adjust this so that it matches um, what came before. 
So we'd say, and sprinted into the forest. So you could really just eliminate this, take sprinted, and insert it right there, and sprinted into the forest. Okay, number three. So these first two dealt with lists. The next one is a comparison. The candy bars you eat are as bad for you as eating ice cream. This one's a little more subtle. You might not notice it at first as being wrong. And someone would say this sentence probably out loud and you wouldn't even think twice about it. But on the GMAT, we have to pay attention to these things. So we have the candy bars you eat. Um, so we have uh, candy bars as a noun are as bad for you as eating ice cream. And so here we have a gerund phrase and then that does not match with the candy bars you eat. Um, so we can adjust this two different ways. We could make this uh, match this format or we could take this format and make this format match. Um, I think the easiest way uh, is to just match the gerund format here and say uh, eating candy bars. So we get rid of this and just say eating candy bars are as bad for you as eating ice cream. And so then our two structures are in parallel. So they're equal, they match each other, um, and it's just easier to read. The last example I have is there's nothing wrong with it. Um, this is a good example of clauses in a list and also the use of rhetorical device. Uh, some of you may recognize the sentence. It's fairly uh, famous. So we hold these truths to be self-evident. And here, this is where we get the beginning of our parallel structure. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so we have three that clauses um, in this sentence that uh, really show how powerful parallel structures can be. It helps to hammer home ideas um, and it creates this sort of uh, cadence in the sentence uh, that readers really like and helps to make it memorable. All right, so that's how you identify parallel structures. Hopefully this helps you when you dive into sentence corrections. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There should be uh, some check marks over there that you can click on to subscribe. And then, of course, head over to gmat.magoosh.com if you need even more GMAT help. All right, be excellent to the universe.